revelation needs to be weighed before by the word. Amen. John said that he saw books that open through the word itself. Even the revelations that's out of context. What we did out of the of the Holy Spirit that will be judged. And the Lord showed me something. He showed me a table, a long table. And in that table, I know that ha it has a spiritual meaning and also a worldly meaning. In that table was the Lord. In that table, there were, there were forks and knives, plates, something extraordinary. And the food was a very special food that only the Lord knows how to give. And so I said to the Lord, what are you wanting to show me with this table? And the Holy Spirit spoke clearly to my spirit saying, tell my people about the day of my vengeance. I want to commit vengeance against my enemies. Tell them about the day of my vengeance, but you will need to impart them a mentality for I to impart that the, the Lord wants to have a vengeance against your enemies. He wants to bless you. There are a few theories of tradition mentalities that are probably wrong that the religion has put to you that this the same cis evangelic system itself because nowadays evangelic is um is also a religion he he comes for the kingdom not for religion how many of you give him a great round of applause Christ, when he reached a place and he stood on the places, he said, repent and convert because the kingdom has come near. That table is of a kingdom. That table, the, the kings and priests sit there. We see, for example, that the Lord spoke of a parable that he invited people to a table of a wedding table to a wedding party. And, it, and among them, there was someone that wasn't dressed as a wedding. Today, there are mentalities that are going to break, structures that are going to break, because we need to go up in another level. We need to grow. We need to go forward. If you're not going forward, if, if you're still, and if you're not in growth, there's something wrong in your life. Then... Isaiah 61, this is a chapter that's a messianic chapter. It's a messianic chapter. He was speaking of Christ. Christ was going to start his ministry. He declared this passage there in the temple. And here there are many points that are important. What's important is the unction. The unction that's in this place is going to take me to a change of a mentality, to the day of the vengeance of the Lord. And here I see four to five things to reach the day of the vengeance of the Lord. You need to understand that we need to be in God. You, you can say, yes, I'm a good person. I'm the greatest person, the most nicest. Nobody hates me. You immediately, if you believe that, you're a liar. The most holy and the most good was surrounded by enemies. It's Jesus Christ. There in the Psalms, David said that many multiplied. How many have multiplied? My adversaries, many are against me 
Amen? Maybe you don't have a physical enemy, a person around that wants to silence you physically, but you can have a spiritual enemy. Doubt is an enemy. Unbelief, not having faith is, a, is an enemy. Amen? So if we go to Isaiah 61, the first thing that I see here, in verse 1 it says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. You will need to go through process. Profi process is not of receiving a word. It's a process of restoration. Amen? Nowadays we speak a lot of revival, but revival is only... It's only to put a click for the light to turn on. Now, what we notice, of there enters restoration. Nobody that's not restored, nobody that's not, not centered can see the day of the vengeance. How many of you worship the Lord? So with this word, God is going to fix, fix crooked places in your life. God is going to show you in which areas you will need to be healed, restored. So we see here that the first thing that we need to receive is the good news. Who's the good news? Christ, our Messiah. It says in 3.16 that for so God loved the world and he has given his only son for all the ones who believe in him to have eternal life. Christ not only is in our, just our savior. We're going to remove the codes. What that word had, Christ is the offering of the father for humanity. Amen. Say the Father God has offered his son to me that I through him could have salvation. So you cannot have bad news. You cannot believe in the bad news. You're in good news. If you don't have Christ, you're constantly having bad news. But if you have Christ in your heart, the good news constantly flow. The, the gospel isn't a religion, it's a good news. So we need to renounce to that mentality of living worried by the depths, by realities of what we have in our daily life. We, li we live preoccupied. If you want to have that mentality that God's going to commit vengeance to your e enemies, you need to recover that mentality from the one who took it. There are people that have a, a kidnapped mind by fear. I come to say that I have good news for you. Say, there's good news, but no apostle. They, they wanted to cut the... the they want to cut the light, water. I, there's good news. I've given you my son. You have everything, says the father. You're the most richest and multimillionaire person in the whole world. You have Jesus in your heart to his name. Now, having the Lord or not, really, your actions and a mentality of restoration, a correct, is going to reflect that you're going to receive. Amen? Now the second thing that I see here, that the prophet Isaiah says, it says, no one 
someone who's broken hearted, a, a person that went through divorce of a situation that's not, that wasn't good, you lost a, a family member. But the unction has come to bind up the brokenhearted. Today we prophesy that God is going to restore your life. The people that are in mourning, the people that do not have hope, is going to receive the Holy Spirit and are going to feed upon the holy, the blood of Christ. Your heart is going to be healed. Your bruises are going to be healed. What I'm speaking, I'm exhorting. I'm, I'm exhorting with a lot of faith. I believe in what I do. I'm, I'm a person of faith. And even though you don't believe, I know that th th I believe that the word is entering your genes, not only your soul, not only your spirit, but this word is entering in your genes. How many of you worship his name? And God is going to bind up the brokenhearted. There's a third thing. It says, the prophet says, to proclaim liberty to the captives. How many things that we do we need to be set free of? Of resentment. The witchcraft there are many forms that the enemy the, that the enemy oppresses and, and the captives the mind of the human being so we need to be set free apostle no a prophet I'm a prophet I'm an apostle I can't I do not I do not need I'm more anointed than, than the Archangel Michael we all need it daily how many of you worship his name? Now being here in the crusade of, uh, in, of incarnation, in my spirit, 18 Satan, Satans put an animal against my spirit. They sacrificed an animal with my name and they stabbed it with a knife and say, May that apostle, this apostle not preach. May he die. And when I saw, I felt in my, in my body that stabbing. And when I felt, the Holy Spirit said, get up because the enemies doesn't want you to take the word. And in that moment, I felt an oppression, just like many are feeling now. A headache, a stomach ache. I don't know. Other body problems. Don't you believe that the enemy enters through those places? So the Lord said, now I set you free. How many of you say amen? An apostle. Yes, an apostle. Also needs deliverance. We all need deliverance. How many want to see the day of the vengeance of the Lord? You need to stop believing that you're the best. You're, go you're being sanctified. You're holy, but you're being sanctified. Holy is, is the final product when the Lord calls him to calls you to his presence. While you're here, you're going to have oppression, attacks. The enemy is going to attack you. You're going to go through hard times, and that's the time where we need deliverance. We need to start trusting the Lord. Well, my brothers... Sometimes, you know what happens? We want to trust our own strength and we forget about God. So God needs to permit situations, situations for you to trust in that power of deliverance. How many of you are going to receive your deliverance today? Say, can come in out of the, uh, out of the headache. I'm taking you, I'm taking you to the day of the vengeance. We're going to establish it in your mind, but you will need to trust all of this. This, 
this is, could be like a daily newspaper in your life, you will need to ask the Lord to scan you, to make yourself an auto-analysis. I have bad actions, Lord. And the, lo ho and the Holy Spirit is, says, you will need to start believing in the good news. Confess it. Maybe you're going to have a bad day. Lord, what has happened? I'm anointed. I have a calling and the Holy Spirit is going to say, you need power of deliverance. Call the elders, the seniors of the church for them to pray for you. How many of you worship his name? So this word is going to take you to trust completely in God. Nobody that trusts in him completely is going to reach the day of a vengeance. Amen? Coming out of jail. There the prophet also said that he sets the people in prison free. There are people that are in prison for situations, for mentalities of ignorance, jail of the, of the things of your mouth, the sayings of your mouth, of hate, of offense. But today the Lord Jesus is going to set you the mind of Christ. Second of Corinthians 2.16. We have the mind of Christ. Now after all this stage, I prophesy that in less, in less of seven months, you're going to overcome all these stages. But sometimes it depends on us. If you're an understood, the understood you in a week are going to end this process. But if you're not understood, you could extend it seven months, one year, even 40 years, just like Israel did. Amen. We want to take you to the day of vengeance. Say, I'm going to come out of misery. I'm going to come out of poverty. I'm going to come out of stillness, of not going forward. But for that, I need to go through all this process to reach the day of the vengeance. Say a mentality of God. Now, in five, I seek to, pro to proclaim the year of the goodwill, says the prophet. Say, now, the acceptable year is now. What does the government of Argentina say? What does Argentina say? What is your panorama? Bad, bad. There's a lot of idolatry, Paraguay, more or so. Brazil, Chile, more or so, more or less. God says that he's going to shake the nations, but this day of the goodwill of God, this year of the goodwill of God, is very personal. Say, it's very personal. Say, this is my best year. Amen. There are people that, for example, servants that say the day of the harvest the year of the harvest in their ministry. The year 2023, the year of the harvest. But the reality is that the year 2023 is the was the worst year. Where's your, where's your topic? It wasn't the day of the harvest. It was your worst year. You know why? Because you put it by your emotions and they weren't healed. Amen? But... If we go through this process, the Lord is going to take you truly in the year of the goodwill for you. That could be at, at all times. According to how I, I'm processed, but if we go to the, to the point, the day of the vengeance of, the, of Jehovah, what does the day of vengeance mean? Psalms, Psalms 23. Five. 
Ese es mi cabeza con aceite y mi copa está rebosando. Ese es el día de la venganza. Though Paris prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies, though anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. It's a it's a good mentality. God is going to put a decorated table before your enemies. There are people that are after you. There are situations that are your worst enemy. The Lord says, do not tell me to kill your enemies. Do not tell me to destroy them. Do not ask me. Bef make Tell me to bless you before them. How many of you worship? Give a great round of applause to the Lord. Because your enemy is about to do metastasis. It has a cancer. But in this year, it's going to do a metastasis. It's called envy. Holy. How many of you worship his name? So the day of vengeance of Jehovah is when God blesses you before your enemies. He sets table before your enemies. He puts your enemies before him. He seats you and he prospers you before him. How many of you worship him? To his name. And you will need to have the healed heart to sit with the one that wanted to kill you. Amen. Amen. To his name. You will need to have a healed heart to sit with him. The one who wanted to destroy you. The one who persecuted you. That didn't give it like you in the social media but calls you a false prophet. How many of you worship his name and worship the Lord's name? So the day of the vengeance of the Lord is the day that he sets a table, a decorated table before them, in the pres before you in the presence of your enemies. That means he decorates with overabundance of blessings. Blessings, listen to me. That God doesn't only give you, but he, he gives you to share with them for the word to accomplish that he sets fire upon his head. Amen? What does this mean? I'm going to, I'm going to pray and uh, lightning's going to fall. No. That it means that you are going to cover him and afterwards he's going to He's going to ask for your help. And you will have all things. And you are going to be like Jose in the time of Pharaoh. When Jose went up. When Jose was, when Joseph was at the top. He was a millionaire. How many of you worship his name? And what did God do? He put him before his enemies. Before his brothers. Amen? How many of you are ready for the day of the vengeance? You will need to go through these prophets, processes. Healing, 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 healing. Because you at the end will have to set free your enemies. And you will need to say, brother, if you're not set free, if you're not called with the blessings that God has given me and you don't and you don't come out of that stomach ache, you'll need to drink omeprazol because God is going to bless me. How many of you give a great round of applause to the Lord? Look that I'm prophesying you. God has something good for you during this season. I reveal to you the day of the vengeance. Romans 12, 19. Let's read it. Sometimes we read this word 
but we don't ask the Lord the revelations. It says, do not commit vengeance yourselves, my loved ones, but let place for the wrath of the Lord, because mine is the vengeance. Leave place. For the wrath. How many of you want to enter that dimension? There I just heard three amens. Say, In penalty law, in criminal law, is there's it means I surrender my will. I surrender my rights. Say I surrender my rights humanly. Humanly you can go to the defense. You can go to the earthly judge. Possibly even to have victory. But before going the judge, you will need to let go of your legal rights. I have, I have a right to, to fight against him. I have the right. The Lord says, let, let go, surrender your will, surrender your rights. Take throw it to the trash let me the place because my is the vengeance says the Lord the true servants of the Lord sons and daughters of God aren't going to be set apart from the tax Do, don't believe that you're going to be set apart if you're truly a servant you're going to be the most attacked person the most signaled person, pointed person, because the Lord is going to point at your heart. He's going to try if you're a servant of the Lord. And in that moment, the Lord, in those moments, how many want to react? What didn't, didn't it happen to you? It's a time when you feel, Lord, help me, help me. And you don't find Lord, Lord, help me or I will help you. While you are not answering, I am going to help you. How many of you say amen? The majority are like this. But the Lord says, the Lord says, heal your heart. Forgive the one who chases you because he wants to end your life give give me the place let go of your legal rights because mine is the vengeance and i will give the payment and if you are bay he's gonna set up a table before him say a table of blessing because there are blessings that are coming for me before this 2023 ends and starting 2024 to his name there are people that are going to start to wash your clothes to start the new year in victory don't you notice that all of this is to wash your clothes change your vocabulary proclaim the good news You need to be let treated by God and let the Holy Spirit put the mentality of the day of the vengeance. Isaiah 63, 1 to 3. Let's see what the Lord says. Repeat, those who watch me, the day of the vengeance has to do with the table, has to do with the table. A, a, table of blessings for me. Isaiah 63, 1 through 6, it says, 
chapter 63. It says, Who is this that cometh from Edom? And me Edom means blood. With dyed garments from Bor Bosra. This that is glorious in, in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to say, Why? Wherefore art there red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treated in the wine fat? I have trotted the wine press along, and of the people there were none with me, for I will treat them in my anger and trample them in my in my fury, and their blood shall be shrinkled upon the garments, and I will stain all my raiment, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of the redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold there. Mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury in it upheld me. In this, in this passage, we see judgment and blessing, judgment and prosperity. The day that the Lord goes to one of his chambers, They're in heavens, and he chooses one of his garments. How many of you believe that the Lord has many garments? And he takes this. I put this garment on. That it's the red garment. The eternal removes, and he says, it's time to commit vengeance of my enemies. I put this because this is the special. To, to cut serpents. It's a, a good garment to step on the witches. It's special to step on the, the envy that is against my chosen. And the Lord says, I come to step on my enemies. It's like the one who step on the grapes. And I'm going to stain th this garment with the bloods of my enemies. And in the middle of the fight, your year reaches. The day, the year of the redeemed reaches. My best blessing is coming for my ministry, for my house, for my family. I'm going to be seeing how my enemies are going to be hit it, hit it by the Lord. Now listen to this. Hear the Lord say something clearly. I saw and I couldn't see no one that could help me. And I got marveled. You know what happens? The majority of the human beings, they have the bad custom of venge committing vengeance by their own. Don't you understand? We have the bad custom to action before God actioning. And so the Lord says, I cannot find so no one to help me. But my arm upheld me. Say, his wrath and his arm. Who's the arm of Jehovah? Is the one who surrender your, your will to him. Lord, why do I need to fight against him? I need to surrender. And the Lord says, Amen. The Lord says, Amen. I surrender, and the Lord says, Amen. And immediately, Lord, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to let. And the Lord says, you convert it into my arm. Because you're going to help me by shutting up. Amen. God doesn't want your help 
when he's going to commit vengeance on her enemies because his is his vengeance. How many of you are going to be the arm of Jehovah? Who are the arms of the Jehovah? The ones who learn to rest in the Lord that don't care what the enemy says. How many of you say amen? What your enemies say. But you rest to his name. Keep calm, keep calm. There are people that cannot overcome your neighbor. You don't have a healed heart. If you continue with that, my brother, sister, you're not the arm of the Lord. You will need to start the best help that you can give the Holy Spirit is not doing anything. How many of you say amen to the word? Amen? I remember the persecution. I was three years. How many of you worship his name? I have friends of all types. Lawyers, apostle. Let's put a demand. Brothers, keep calm. Apostle. If you need some documents. No, keep calm. Keep calm, brother. Others wants to redeem their conscience. I can bring a killer. But I said, no, no, keep calm. Let's just wait in the Lord. It doesn't matter. It's not. It's not. They offered me many things during this time. But I said, I, I trust the Lord. The devil is also going to offer you in an easy way to commit vengeance. Why don't you go in, the, in their profile of, of, pro, of Facebook and also speak of them? Say with me, I have to die. I help him in the best way. Do like this. If you're shut, you look prettier. How many of you give a great round of applause? And to his name. There's a special table for the chosen of God. To this level. This level of healing of trusting the Lord, of him to commit vengeance, your name, your level of trust. But there are tables that you will need to leave. The Psalm says, the table of the people, of the people that make fun of, that, that criticize. Satan also has a table and it speaks of the table of the demons. You will need to come out out of the plates of the demons, of the sacrificed food of, to idols, the friendship with the world. The friendship with the world is being an enemy with God. I'm just generating a conscience that the word is going to work in your mind. Now, it also speaks of a, of a Jezebel, the woman that had prophets, false prophets eating at the, her table. There are people that need to come out of her table. A man called John the Baptist said, I'm not sitting in this table. He confronted Herodes, Herodias. He, he confronted the king and the king had a fear at this prophet. But the word says that this woman, Herodias, made his daughter dance before Herodes. And this woman committed seduction. What do you want me to give you, said Herodes. Herod. 
If you want, I can give you the half of the kingdom. And she said to her daughter, ask for the, the head of the prophet. You will need to leave some, some tables, just like their prophets that are eating. Jezebel can say anything, everything against you, lying. But my conscience is calm. Look what he, sh what she said. Look what she said. Look what Herod said. I give you the half of my kingdom. And Jezebel said, I prefer the head of the prophet because the head of the prophet is worth more than a country. Is worth more than the half of a country. And Herod had three countries. You know what happened? If he, if he, if she couldn't cut off the head of, of, of the prophet, then he would keep on winning more territories. There are tables that instead of constructing your ideas here, he's Stealing your ideas represents the kingdom. The ability to take up territories. Jezebel wanted to take up the countries. There are many countries that are being used by Jezebel. And the prophets are say prophetic ideas in your table. But I prophesy that you leave that table say in this season God gives me back my ideas because in the correct table in the t table of the vengeance of Jehovah I'm being I'm being handed back seven times all my ideas my designs why don't you why aren't you progressing? Because you're in the table of Jezebel. When you're in the table of the living God, in the place where you're against your enemies, you have ideas. You ha you're a successful person in that m table. How many of you worship him? It's a special place reserved for the eternity. There in Revelation 4, he says to John, come up here. Come up here. Afterwards, say, today I'm coming up in that place. Today doors are revealing and I'm hearing the shofar and I'm going up in that spiritual place where the table is. These are places of rest. It's a place where you have surrendered completely to God. And it's not in your strength, it's in the strength of the Lord. Raise your right hand because I'm seeing the Lord. And I'm seeing a, a staircase, and I see people that are going to let go of proudness, and you're going to start going up, and the Lord says, come up. How many of you worship him to his name? Would you like to know what there's in that table? Put a set up a table before my enemies. That table has decorations. There the prophet Samuel knew. There in first of Samuel nine, verse nine, the word of God. Be 
Before time in Israel, when a man went to inquire God, thus he spake, Come and let us go to the seer, for he that is now called the prophet was before time called a seer. Then said Saul to the servant, Well said, Come, let us go. So they went unto the city where the man of God was, and as they went up the hill to the city, they found young maidens going out to draw water, and said unto them in the seer here. And they answered them and said he is behold here is before you, you making haste now for he came the day to the city for there is a sacrifice of the people to the day in the high place the mind of the Lord there are people here that aren't a businessman here that aren't a king that don't have the contacts the contracts firm signed but it's already in the mind of God. How many of you say amen? So God needs today to take you from one place to another. We see that Saul was after animals here. There are people that are going to let go of the, of the earthly things and going to start focusing in what the kingdom has for them. So we see here that this table, this woman with the one he, this woman conducted to the prophet Samuel and the prophet Samuel took the king to a, 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 a place that was set apart. Now this secret place where the table was, was in a high place. How many of you received that word? In this season, God is going to connect to high places. Receive it in the name of Jesus. You're connected with, with someone that God needs to speak to you for you to enter a humble place. God wanted to try Saul's humbleness so we see here that this table of vengeance is connected with, with someone i prophesy that those contacts come for you the kingdom contacts in the next year in the next days in the next day i connect with someone called Sa uh, samuel there's someone that has a dimension that i don't have that has an unction that i don't have that's going to be of a blessing for my life how many of you say amen? Give a great round of applause to the Lord. In this table, the prophet Samuel, there was 30 people. Only 30 ate with him. There were 30 prophets. The number 30 is maturity. It represents maturity. They were all elders. When you enter, when you enter that place, there was an x-ray that was taken. There was a prophetic field. And there's the place where Saul, God took him. How many of you are ready to enter that place where the elders are? It's a dimension in your life of maturity where the Father is going to connect. And there are people that are in that dimension, 30 people connected to that table that eat it with the prophets. In that table of the prophet, there was a special food. Say that in the table of the vengeance of the Lord, we don't eat just any food. There were servants in that, and angels. There were angels of other level that I don't know of. Did you know that each ministry has an angel, and each ministry has a, an equipment of superior angels. Amen. How many of you ask why this, this happened in the apostles' place? And, and I also pray for that. We have the same God. We know the same Jesus. We proclaim, but the, her the same hierarchies, 
the different hierarchies work for with each the angels that work here and they obey the Lord and they obey me to his name that's why it's important the coverage how many of you worship the Lord and in that table in that table I prophesy to you that God is going to set levels of unctions and he's going to make available certain angels that weren't available for you to move in other levels, to take up territories and conquer. How many of you say amen? Saul was a weak person. But the prophet with his servants, when he he connected with the movement, his level changed. Amen? Say with me, my level is going to change. I'm good. Today, by sitting in this in this place, I'm I'm taking a prophetic word that's gonna make me transition. Amen. In the table, it says, at the point the the, the prophet Samuel sat there and he said to Saul, "Bring him near. Bring him near. Put him near me in the first seats, in the first places." And he called Samuel, he said, servant, bring me the, the food, the reserve food that I have. That probably is the food of the prophet. The rest ate something else. Because there are levels and unctions that only eat, are eaten in a certain level. They're gourmet in the Lord. This this prophet ate the back, ate, ate, ate the chest, the chest of the lamb. The prophet Samuel ate the chest of the lamb. It's the most sweet part, and it's the most flavorful part. How many of you worship his name? I'm going to enter levels of confidence. There are things that I cannot explain because you haven't even chewed on it. But if you pass tests, if you let yourself be healed by God, if you in the Lord, if, if you rest in him, he's going to introduce you in this type of table and he's going to connect with this type of people that are going to impart a certain mentality. That chest of the lamb represents it represents the food of the prophet. And what you know what the, that that represents the heart of Christ. The word speaks of a table of the twelve. In that table, Jacob, Peter, the twelve apostles were seated. And I imagine Jesus was at the at the at the at the point, at, but the one who was near to the table, the one who put his set up his ear to the chest to God's to Jesus' chest was John. John, the other one was Peter. And when Peter said, when someone was going to, when Jesus said, someone's going to, who is going to give me, who's the one who's going to, who's going to take, who's the one who's going to give me, is the one who, who wets the, the bread. They were all apostles. How many of you worship his name? So they're apostles of different levels. They're apostles that, that in this season are going to come to this place. You know why? 
because they will want to know what the apostle, what God said to the apostle. How many of you say amen? What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? John, John had an anticipated revelation. Do you understand? But where did he have? Where was John setting his ear at the chest of Jesus? What did the prophet eat? The chest of the land. With who did he connect in that table with Samuel? It was the royal food. Say, the chest of the lamb. He went into a prophetic stage. That's why when Samuel entered to the table of the prophets, the unction fell over him. Do you believe that you're in just another place? No, you're in apostolic house and prophetic house. And you're feeding on this message by the unction that's here. How many of you worship his name? God is moving you. Say to me, to unctions of vengeance. Unctions of vengeance. You're going to reach places that you're not even going to pray and God's going to be killing witches. I've reached places, my loved ones. I haven't even prayed. But when I entered, the territory was shaken. And afterwards, I find out that the, that the witches died I found out by the newspaper, only by walking in that place, to his name. You're going to go to be dimension into levels of nearness, of confidence. There are people that this, and it's going to accomplish an exodus. You're going to be a special of Jehovah. Say, I'm the special treasure of the Lord. The word also speaks of a table where Jesus made wine appear. Amen? And there is saying, you, and there the best wine was left for the end. Do you know that we're in the end times? The best of the Lord is going to be untied during this time. I'm not waiting for past unctions. The past unctions is like eating all day's rice with fried eggs. <laughs> Eat that for one month. You're going to be in a cold situation. That's how the old wine is. That's how the old wine is. You cannot be the same. We, we need the new of God. We need those solid food that's coming from eternity. And the word says that the Lord reserved that table, the best wine for the end. And we're in the end. Christ is coming soon. There are many signs that are happening on earth. The last harvest. The greatest harvest that's going to happen in the nations is manifesting right now to his name. There's a few time left. According to the people that are studying here to 50 years, the planet is, is no longer going to have water. That's what the world says. But say with me, I'm not going to no longer be here. Say, I, I'm no longer going to be here. Who knows if we're going to live 50 years more? There are people that are stepping onto their 60s. You are not going to be here. <laughs> Blessed be his name. How many of you say amen? 
Are we ready for that moment? And that new wine. Say, prophet, this is a new wine. Do you want me to reveal what the new wine is? That new wine has to do, that God's going to put, that it doesn't matter if you're alive or dead. It doesn't um, matter if I'm alive or dead. You're going to access to heavenly places constantly. You're going to happen. What happened to John? Listen. John said, I was in the spirit in the day of the Lord. He saw the rapture. That means that John was at a time there, there, and then another time here, and another time there, and another time here. And now I understand what Romans 8 says. And I saw in the spirit that new wine of the end times has to do to be in a bit here and a bit there. There are people that starting in this week are aren't going to stop having vision, aren't going to stop having dreams. Blessed is his name and God with those dreams are going to be tra is going to be training you to take steps. Say, the designs come from over there. The designs come from eternity. You're entering that new wine. And I'm seeing the table now. Hallelujah. I've just seen it. I saw the table. And the Lord is at the point. The Lord is in the point. I, and the Lord says, I'm here. They're all seated here with me. Tell them to maintain their self. Now I understand what he said to the prophet. I declare that this season, it, it's prohibited to come down in the name of Jesus. If you're a person, you're a person that you're going to search for the Lord in a great way this during this season. I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a hammer and I see a glass and he's breaking it. And I'm empowering each one of you in my table to take up territories, cities, to take up homes. The, the pastors that were here, their, their ministry is going to go in another level. The, you're going to go in another growth to his name. God is doing with something with the right ear. And start asking, make my, my ear thin to hear your voice during this season to hear your dimensions during this season in the name of Jesus say in the name of Jesus I receive the day of your vengeance I receive that mentality of kingdom I'm going forward you set me in this table you set me in this place where there are prophets where your voice is being heard, where there are people that hear your heart. You brought me here. It wasn't my emotions. It wasn't the circumstances. It was you that brought me here to make my, my he hearing thin, to make me strong during this desert. I'm transitioning to the dimension of the prophets. Say, I'm going up to the table of the, ta of the prophets in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for them and I decree and I declare that it's made flesh. I see angels riding in the heads, this mentality, the day of the vengeance, the best times are coming for your lives because your true confidence of God is going to come. Blessed is the name of the Lord. And there's the seal of the Holy Spirit in your front and in your heart. For it to be sealed by the blood of Christ. 
Aleluya. It depends on your mentality and your heart for God to bless you during this season. Receive it. There's the Holy Spirit. Receive it in the name of Jesus. How many of you say amen? Get to your, se to your feet for a moment. There's the worship. I, I love you deeply, Abba Father. Let's go say, I love you deeply, Abba Father. Say, I love you deeply, Abba Father. I have a word, a prophetic word for you. That's directly, that's direct, personal, says the Lord. But in this moment, we need to worship him. Say, Father, I love you deeply. These songs inspire me to search more of God. Hear this song. With this song, the ear, my ears and eyes are being opened. Listen. My eyes and my ears are being opened. If the prophet has asked for this song. Raise your hands. Abba, Father. Raise your hands, flow, flow, flow. People that watch us, worship with us. Join the table. There's the Holy Spirit worshiping. Raise your hands.
say, Lord Jesus, you're moving in a special way in this place and in all places, in my home, in the name of Jesus. Lift your finger and say, Lord Jesus, anoint this finger. When I reach the home, I am going to lift this finger and there are principalities that are going to flee, that are going to go back, and that are going to flee, that are going to go back, that are going to back off. I see that Jesus takes you by your hand. And I see another light, being of light behind you, the Lord says, my oil over you, my grace over you. I'm touching your family. There's someone called Ruth. How is it? Your daughter. The Lord says, I'm healing her heart. And I just give you that by a sign because I'm visiting your family, your house. I see a table. It's like a church, your church. And I bring a multiplication, a growth. I brought... I brought you, son, to my table to take you to another level during this season because many have been the battles, says the Lord. Many are the, are the affliction of the just, but he will let, set them free of all. Your home, your family. And, there's, and there was a great attack over your daughter Ruth and the Lord cancels now and there's a, a fresh blowing that comes that's filling your house in the name of Jesus say Lord you're moving in a special way in a tremendous way, in a prophetic way, in the name of Jesus. The Lord says, I'm straightening your marriage. There's a situation that you cannot forgive yourselves and the Lord has brought you here for that to be healed. The Lord is showing now to that to this man in a dream an incubus demon made him eat. You saw someone giving you to eat in your dreams and this comes out now receive it power of God and it cuts all organ that was going to be harmed by this now in the name of Jesus and the problems are being teared off. <laughs> Receive it in the name of Jesus. And the Lord is setting 
a poster over your head and the spirit is taking you to a new place where you're going to have a greater economic incomes and it's going to happen in less than three months receive it in the name of Jesus receive it receive it in the name of Jesus repeat Lord I ask you to speak through the prophets through the the word of science through the prophet speak to me in the name of Jesus say today is a special night where God has a prophetic word where God has a word of science there's a person that has come for the first time here Okay. I want to give a detail. I want to give the detail. That young woman that's there. That. Get to your feet. Let's see. Put your hands in the stomach and for her to shut her eyes. Shut your eyes. The Holy Spirit of God is cutting all rejection from your life. And even bad thoughts that have come to your mind to steal your life. Receive it from the Lord Jesus. Receive it from the Lord Jesus. And this woman that's here, I want her to come. This woman that's here, I want her to come. Come with me. I saw a... A black folder. There are legal problems that are going to be solved. The second thing is, I, I see that he's touching a man in your family. For him to align to his feet. And the third thing that he's cutting a generation of cancer that are coming, that have killed women in your family. How is that? My mother, what happened to your mother? Had breast cancer she died of that come a bit more to the altar because the Lord is working directly burning burning that your documentary documents are being untied I set this young man free I think it's your son you're asking the Lord for this man to come out of drugs there are bad friendships. There's drugs. There are drugs, says the Lord. And the spirit of drug addiction is going to be set free. And I'm healing you of cancer. Who came? My sister. My sister that has breast cancer. Generations he's cutting. How many of you give a great round of applause? Your mother died of cancer and your sister has cancer. <coughs> She's in treatment. Look, in Buenos Aires, if God is speaking, it's because there's going to be a sanity that's re going to reach you. How impressive. 